5, verse 1 to 4. Let's read it all together from verse 1. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back sealed with the seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to lose its seven seals. Hallelujah. Amen. We may get seated. If you continue reading that passage, there are certain truths that are going to come out of reading that uh, passage. And I want to bring one of those truths to us today. We, I'm still in the spirit and in the mood of Easter. I'm still enjoying it. Because what happened on the Easter Friday is something that uh, causes me to rejoice in the very fact that he died to set me free. He died to liberate me. He died so that I can be his, his child and his child indeed. Now if you read verse 1 of where we have read, this is John and he is in the island of Potma, Pot Patmos and he is watching. He, he is watching and God opens him and opens the heavens for him to see. And John, what he is seeing what he sees actually depresses him. He feels so depressed. He feels so fearful and so frustrated and so empty. And if you like, he feels even hopeless. Feels like there is no hope and he starts weeping. And the reason is because the man sitting on the throne is, is he, he is there. And he has crawled. And the angel is asking whether there is someone who can come and open. But the thing is, nobody even wants to look at it. Nobody, no, there is no one to open. And there is nobody who wants to look at it. Nobody to open and nobody to look at it. The story of Easter. Nobody wants to look at him. He is beaten. He is he is really bitten and he's bleeding everywhere and nobody wants to look at him. And Isaiah says, even the vintage, even his own body looks so, so bad and so ugly that nobody wants to look at him. And no wonder, speaking as a revelation in the book of Psalms, he, 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 he cries out, Lord, Lord, why have you forsaken me? The same words that he speaks on Golgotha, why have you left me? Why have you allowed the enemy to hit me the way they have hit me? Now if you like, if you, if you think of John and the wonder that John is, then you have not seen anything. Because even in the Bible, in the New Testament, in the Gospels, we read of a story of two disciples that were going to Emmaus. They are going to Emmaus after Jesus Christ. Actually, it is the day that Jesus resurrected. But... It is after the weekend because there are religious people. The Passover is finished and you could not travel. Oh, I tell you. You know, although my, 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 my family were not uh, uh, seventh day, uh, Sundays we used not to cook. That was their Sabbath. The food for Saturday, Jotunakura. Amen. But I can also tell you the food that they used to prepare, it is good food. Kwasababu. Ni ile chakule waluya wanasemaga ni apetaisa. Mi maharagwe na bocho. Sasa kile unataka kuweka ni chumbe tu. Alafu unafanyafanya namna hii. Unakaa kwa kando, unanyanyua. 
Haikuwa na shida sana. But here the disciples are going through the weekend and the weekend was bad weekend and Cleopa and his friend are going to a mouse. And they are so sad. They are so frustrated. And as some of us, when we think about Cleopas, we have words that we can say. And you know, many of us find ourselves in the same situation. The Lord has said the things that he wants to do, but we don't have faith to appropriate that and to walk in that faith so that we can receive the blessings that he promised to Abraham, which are mine. The ones he promised to Isaac, which are mine. The blessings of Jacob, which are mine. But because of the surrounding events and things that are happening, I feel very low, I feel very weak, and I lose what God wants to do for me. Cleop and his friends were discussing the events of from, actually they started from Friday, and they went to Saturday, and now they are talking about what had happened. Because that morning, the information they had gotten was that Jesus was alive. But they were making fun of those ladies. So I said, I think that you are, hey, hey, my jabu. No, 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 So they were so sudden, they were going to a house. And I want to say to someone here, it does not matter how disappointed, how discouraged, how the things are so hard on you, there is someone, someone is catching up with you. There is someone who is walking faster towards you. There is someone who wants to enter into your conversation. Are you going to allow him or are you going to allow him to pass? They were talking and Jesus catches up with them. And he said, what is the story that you're talking about? And they, they recite the story and Jesus rebukes them. Wait, don't you know? Don't you know? Don't you understand? And he goes back from Genesis. He goes through all the scriptures that are talking about him. And finally, he goes to Friday, he dies. He goes to Saturday, he rises up. And you know, the Bible says Cleopatra and his friends did not notice him until he blesses. Oh, may God come and bless something in your life so that you can know it is here. You know, may God come and make something alive in you. You know, may God come into your situation and speak life, bring healing, bring provision, so that you can know it is. And may that God who has caught up with you do something so that you can say, yes, that was the Lord. I, I knew him. You know, this is what they said. You know, did you not feel something? Did you not understand something? That was him because after he blessed, he disappeared. And they ran back to tell the other, they went back to say, he is alive. And I want to tell you, John, John, the apostle John is in the same situation. He, he does not understand what is happening. He had seen Jesus resurrect, yes. But this picture he is seeing is wondering what is going to happen. What on earth is going to happen? John, in his mourning, he is mourning because they lack someone, one person, who can open the scroll and who can read what is written into it and look into it. For John, what was bothering him was his limitation in perspective. You, you, you know, on Wednesdays, we are having a wonderful series here. Wonderful series. You, you, you people don't know Simon Kirago. You have never listened to him. What a powerful preacher. Oh, man. He has been handling the blessings of Abraham. Man, oh, oh. We are Jamal. But now. And he has brought in a few revelations that we have picked. One of the revelations that I picked, one of them in one of the Wednesdays, was that it is not until Abraham separated himself with the Lord that God told him, now look. If you look this way and look that way, what you see is yours. And you know, it is also true, my brother, my sister, when there is separation, there must be some separation of a kind. 
There must be separation within me and this world, separation within me and the time, separation within me that I can go closer to the Lord. And immediately there was separation then. And some, someone told us this Wednesday that it is what you see. If there is something that God needs to help us, is sight. Look at your neighbor, tell them, well, now another visit. Hey, now another visit. Because actually, let me tell you, let me tell you, your sight, you don't know what your sight is. You don't know how to. Some of you don't appreciate it at all. Until you start wearing this. And then one day, it falls down. Sorry, Rosemary, it falls down. And then, you're wondering. You're wondering. You're trying to. In actual fact, there's a time you realize. Thank God for these guys who at least came to give us something that can help us keep on focusing. We sat somewhere with Alice yesterday and I gave her my glasses to help her see. But they cannot help her because this one are tailor made for me. Are you understanding? So I said, she wake it over. So to me, 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 in actual fact, they miss so much that they don't know that trees and people are different. So the first person is touched by Jesus, he says, look, and he says, no, I can see people, but there are trees. I think he saw people standing. Sight. Sight is very, very crucial. Sight is very, very crucial. From John's limited earthly perspective, it seems that destiny is hanging in the balance because no one is worthy to open the scroll. No one is worthy to open the seals. No one is ready even to look. And, and, and John is worried about the ages to come. Will there be redemption? Will there be salvation? Will there be it? There is no one in heaven. There is no one on earth. The dominion of man, there is nothing. The dominion of God, there is not, not. And then under the earth, the dominion of Satan. What a frustration. Yani, you get to a place, the dominion of God, no one. Dominion of man, no one. Dominion of the devil, no one. Yani, in the heaven, on the earth, and under the earth, no one. Don't you think you would be frustrated? I met an atheist the other day. And he, he wanted, he wanted me to get into a debate with him. Real atheist. Now my atheist was a chapa. Hey, chapa was a person. We look for Serena. See me, me look for the new this time. You know, so some they look for me. Serena went daddy every time. See, so I'm not going to get any idea to the Serena. This atheist. He said, I. And you know he's my friend, so he told me, Bishop, I know you don't know this, but I'm an atheist. I support. Then he supported the newspaper the previous day, there was an atheist there. And he spoke many things and spoke many things and spoke many things. And he says, they are the people of real life. Real life. Yet how they are not attached to anything. But you know, for you to be an atheist, you need a lot of faith. Actually, you need very little faith to believe there is a God. But to be an atheist, are you okay, Jama? Come on, Ali. Because in everything he was saying, he is fighting about a truth. He was actually resisting about a truth about God. Because God exists. 
And then he'll go around and tell me, show me a miracle. And I'll believe. Why? Because he's fighting with miracles. He's, he's fighting with God who wants us with miracles and signs. John. In the heaven, no one. Under the earth, in the earth, and under the earth, no one. This man find himself in a real struggle. Remember, John is where he is because of his faith. Remember, John saw Jesus resurrect. Remember, John saw it all. But at this point, it's like John is not understanding what is happening. And I want to say this. The things of God are often far different from the way they appear to us within our earthly perspective. One of the worshippers, worshipping elder, steps over to John and says, Do not weep. Behold the lion. John looks and says, I see a lamb. I mean, ay, 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 ay. One of the worshiping elders, you know, steps outside from the worship and comes to and he's telling John, weep not. And one of the elders says unto me, Weep not. Behold the lamb of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals. That is someone who comes from worship. And I pray that God can take all of us into worship because when we come from worship, we are different. We see things the way we ought to see them. This elder is coming from worship. And he tells John, there is one. There is a lion. There is one. He is a lion. He is from the tribe of Judah. There is one. There is one. There is one. Don't weep. There is one. And I said to someone, don't weep. There is someone. Your help is closer to you than you believe. Don't weep. There is someone. There is a lion from the tribe of Judah. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Allow him to arise within you. There is one. But when John looked, see to some John looked, what did he see? He saw a lamb. What was the lamb like? Slain. Haha. <laughs> Stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into us. And I want to say this, and please. You might not even understand where I'm coming from and where I'm going. You can call my sermon hope. You can call it resurrection. You can call it perspective. You can call it opening your eyes. But because some of you will forget what I'm saying, this statement that I'm going to make now, you can write it somewhere. This one. You know, I was, I was uh, praying last night with uh, some ministers that are going to minister somewhere today. And I prayed that God will give him a remarat. I know we prepare to preach, but God to give them a remarat. A remarat, if you connect yourself with the remarat, something happens. Even in a service like this, if you pick your remarat, connect with it, something will happen. Listen to this. The problem isn't John's eyesight. The problem is in John's eyesight. It is his perspective. The problem is not the eyesight of John. I think your problem is not your eyesight. Your problem is your perspective. John is told by an elder, Behold a lion from the tribe of Judah. But he doesn't perceive it that way. What does he perceive? A lamb of God. Slain. Let me say this again. What he sees is correct. But he understands. What he understands is incorrect. Let me come back again. What he sees is correct. 
but his understanding is incorrect. John, the one who was weeping, the one who was wailing, had his eyes on the problem. His eyes was on the problem, while the one who was worshipping had his eyes on the solution. And there is a difference, that your eyes can be on the problem, and some of us, they are looking at the solution. Even sometimes when we are praying for security, some of us pray for the problem. We see the problem, but there are some of us who pray seeing the solution, the victory, because we are not, the devil cannot be allowed by our God to take charge of this country. As I was praying, what the devil had planned, God stopped it. He can't do it. He can't do it. You want to kill people? The Lord stops you, you kill too. That's not his plan. His plan is, his plan in Westgate was to kill everybody there. But God's plan was to rescue him. So John had his eyes on the problem. When the elder who comes from worship looks at the solution, so what he sees on the throne, the, the, the elder sees the lion. But John sees the lamb. The question is, what are you seeing? Is it your problem? Or is it a solution that God has for us? Have you ever felt hopeless, overwhelmed, trapped, and helpless. That is simply because you haven't seen the end of the story. And I said earlier before you go back to the disciples going to Emmaus and say they had no faith in themselves. Or they did not trust the Lord. You need to know what happened on Friday. When Jesus is taken from them, they follow him from far. They don't want to go close. They are also afraid. They are so scared. They, are, they feel helpless. They feel hopeless. So even when they are told he's alive, they hear it, but they still see their problem. That you can be told the answer is with Jesus, but you don't see the answer. You see the problem. Why? Because of the helplessness and hopelessness that you find yourself in. Like John in, in Patmos. Yes, they have been with him at the Last Supper. As he spoke mysteriously. And he says, one of you would betray me. And you know, fear actually struck them from that point on. They were asking each other, is it I, Lord? Is it I, is it I? They had been with him in the garden. As he prayed in agony for so long. That they finally fell asleep from exhaustion. They were there when Judas came to betray him. They are there. They, re they realized the horror. What came after Judas betrayed him. They had followed Jesus from a distance, and Jesus was taken before Annas, the high priest, John 18. He was taken before Caiaphas, Matthew 26. He is taken before the Sanhedrin, Matthew 26. He is taken before Pilate, Matthew 27. He is taken before Herod, Matthew 23, Luke 23. And he is taken before Pilate, Luke 23. They saw that, and you know what? They, they get to a place where their only help is gone. They had seen Jesus coach until his body could not hold the pain anymore. They had watched the more as they spoke ill on him and the soldiers nailed him. They were there when he was pierced. They were there. Have you ever felt hopeless? overwhelmed, trapped, or helpless. That is simply because you haven't seen the end of the story. Because heaven's script of the ages is called the mystery of God, Revelation 10, 7. Because Satan cannot understand it. He is also powerless to change it. And he wants to convince you that God has left you. He wants to convince and say that God is not in this country. He wants to convince you that God is not able. As I listen to the atheist speak to me, he said this, I don't believe in that God who creates Adam and Eve and put them in the garden of Eden and then throw it in a serpent 
and he knows the serpent I don't believe in that God and then he says I don't believe in that you know he's fighting with are you getting it I don't believe in that God how can God create people and when there are a couple of thousands he destroys all of them and saves one person and a few animals I don't believe in that God he's fighting with that miracle oh man he went on and on and on I don't believe in hell and the heaven is is you know oh my goodness I told him I'm not ready to talk to you now so he talked for an hour I wasn't actually never answered him I only sympathized with him he said Bishop he's a Kikuyu Bishop which is good I'll go there again surrender so that we can discuss these things further now that is the time I'll give him. That's the time you will face it. But this time he spoke. And all of what he was speaking, he was just fighting with the truth. He needs a lot of faith. Me, I don't need a lot. All what I need is God. Have mercy on this man. But for him, he has to carry tons and tons of notes and so on. But my friend asked him. I had a friend, a Christian friend. Where, where? He became a scientist. Do you know the Big Bang Theory? Do you know? He became so scientific and I looked at him. What my friend wanted to tell him. So you are a new way, a new way. I thought, not my friend at Amtukana, but. Listen, sometimes we get to a place where we feel like God is not there and we want to be atheists because we feel like God is not there. But it is because of our perspective, because God has been there all the time. God has been there all the time. God has been there all the time. God has given us a key called worship that changes our perspective on heavenly things. You know, worship, Satan cannot even start to understand worship. If there is something he doesn't understand is worship. Because what happened when Lucifer was kicked out, he only knows praise. And he knows what praise does. You praise a bishop, he becomes a little god. So please don't praise me. Oh, Bishop Wet, oh, Bishop Wet. And then without, without knowing, I have three bodyguards, and three bodyguards, and six bodyguards. So when when uh, Ruth wants to greet me, we start a church together. And as we were in a bodyguard, we were Kwanza. And we had the Ukaone, you know. And then all of a sudden, Unataka Magari Matatu Bene, and Magari Matatu Yuma. Sasa Kweli, and Nataka Kujaga Kadidu. So the devil knows praise. He knows praise. The devil knows praise. He was praised that you are where the You are The thing that he does not understand is worship. Why does he not understand worship? Because worship connects me with God. It lifts me from where I am. It takes me to God. And if my worship does not, it is not yet worship. So what, what we call worship here sometimes is not worship. It is closing our eyes and singing songs that the volume has gone low. Now we have a song you know, real worship, real worship takes you from where you are to the throne of God and it changes your perspective. Oh my goodness. The church, Zimmerman Church today are not hearing what I'm saying. I'm saying when we walk, when we praise, the devil sees. Ah, to send a queen. Who you done a little quack in here, Pandi? Who now want to qualify here on as a funny video? Quite wrong. 
Was that your name? The praise. See your praise. Nam katiko. Lakini she I met her here one day. She was doing practice. Nani vikuambia tamini ni meanza kufanya ma practice. Hapa nitakuwa ni kiruka. Na she kwa pasi. Kwa ni bisho kwa joki. Ni practice. Yes, you know, the practice, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, there are so many people here who are lighter. Like in the Kuruka, you are zito. Practice. But when it comes to worship, there is very few of us that can desire to go into that mode of worship because mode of worship takes you down on your knees, takes you flat on the floor. Nobody wants to do that, man. My brother has a wonderful suit. So in his intellectual ability, suiti na hiyo, as it but if he gets into real worship, I say again what? Real worship. You don't care, you don't worry. No wonder when you come, your perspective is different. It is changed. It has changed. First Corinthians 2 verse 7 to 10. The three verses there, they say this. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Did you hear that? But as it is written... I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of men the things which God has prepared for them that have him. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit such is all sin. Yes, the deep things of God. So when you get into worship, the Lord push you into a place. Oh my goodness. Do you know why people don't want to worship a lot? Because if you worship a lot, people might think you are mystic. When we went to South Africa, where mama, she can even go you marry me up. I mean, you cannot come from deep worship and you hold the things. I'm telling you, you cannot. Anaweza, alafikilesha mba yangu yiko pare. Ah, no, it's crazy. Anaweza. Bisho, pana sema ni tuwezi lepe. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anaweza, mwa. No wonder. Tukitoka hapa kama unachapa nana, utaenda ukipiga mke wako, na ulikuja kumabu. Unatoka hapa, unaendelea na dhani, as if nothing has happened. It's because you have refused to get into it. Unajua kanista ni nzuri. You know, this morning in our prayer with Alice, Our Father, what in heaven, our Lord be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses. We are praying for trespasses. Lord, forgive our trespasses. Forgive my trespasses. Forgive the times I've prayed and failed. Forgive me. And I pray for some of you that God will release a spirit of asking God to forgive us. So that when we come to worship, it will be real worship. You know, we will come to real worship. Because you can go to Cataloni 50 times. And every time you come, you blame God. Because May God help us so that we can know. Oh my goodness. The time will not allow us to get into that level. But here, worship is the key 
that lifts you up to God's perspective. God's perspective. The higher you rise in worship, the smaller the devil and his kingdom will look to you. If you are coming, you are landing in the morning in Nairobi, or landing wherever you are landing in the morning. When you are up, two kapisa, kule two kuna mawingu ya ya hiyo ya white. Alafu naanza kutoka kwa hiyo mawingu ya white. Unaona tatu dogo, tatu dogo kule chini hata gari uone. Ukisonga songa unaona oh, unaona tu gari. Ukisonga songa unaona tu gari. Ukija plan hapa, hii barabara ya pana Mombasa unaona magari. Yaani ndege imekuja sasa unaona magari. Yana zeremka. Ukienda pale karibu 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 unaona za magari makubwa. Ndio hata unaweza soma namba kabla hujalanda. Akikunu singa many years sana. Actually he had not gone to school. But he sang a song. I will arise. I will arise. I go. I go up. Wonders. Wonders. I'm trying to interpret that. Some of you can. I know some of you are helping me. But he says, I will fly. Up. Up. Because wonders. May God help us to fly up in worship. So that wonders. So that our perspective about what God can do. Becomes. Becomes. The, you know, the devil and his things become so small, and we see God as he is. The devil becomes very small. And this, when you see things from heaven's perspective, the one opening the scroll changes from being a lamb to a lion. Oh my goodness. So that it changes in your perspective from Jesus who is hung on the cross to the king of kings, the one who says, let the weak say they are strong, the one who says, let the poor say they are rich because of what? What Christ has done. Your perspective changes. You don't see the lamb slain. You see the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. Am I speaking to someone here? May the Lord allow you to see the lion. Oh my goodness. Kuna wazungu alienda kucheza na lion pale Kuruga National Park South Africa. The rest is history. <laughs> Sini kuambie tu. Jamaa wengine hapa Naikuru walifikiria wanaweza cheza na dofu. Wakaenda na kamera tu au tu tu asimu. Kila mtu anasongea karibu. Walikuwa wafita na wavili sasa. Eh, kaenda dogo na hiyo mudhi. Hii ni dogo eh. Naye dofu Kainuka, akawa kimbiza, akawa kanyanga, wakakufa, akareta matari, akawa zika. Because the elephant in the elephant was still the elephant in the elephant was there. So you see, instead of seeing the weak Christ before Calvary and before resurrection, you see the lion. Jesus was not just the lamb slain in Revelation chapter 5 or the lamb slain at Calvary. He was the lamb slain from the foundation. Yani, from the foundation of the world, Revelation 13, 8. His temporary defeat had always been part of God's plan for ultimate victory. Yani, hata kwa msalaba, bado alikuwa mes, kuwa slain from the foundation. And it's not happening in Calvary, he was given in. When the Lord said, no, 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 this is what is going to happen, Satan, I'm going to bless the woman's seed, and one day, the woman's seed is going to crush you. He sacrificed, he was slain, he was the lamb that was slain for Adam to get some clothes. He was the one that was slain for you and for me to be what we are. He was not dying then. The devil did not know. 
No wonder even John had that confusion that he saw the lamb on a particular Friday and he doesn't understand how that lamb that was slain can open the seal, how it can do. But he's been told, no, look carefully. You're going to see a lion over there. There is a lion. After Calvary, Satan and the demons had just three short days to celebrate. They are killing of God's latest prophet. Before God walked to hell, and Satan was puzzled at us and asked God, what are you doing here? He said that since the fall of man, death, hell, and the grave would not be, would not have dominion. Will not have dominion. You will not have dominion. That's God who says so. And he's telling Satan, you give me, you, you gave me the authority when you crucified me on the cross, I got back my key. I got back my power. I got back my power. Deuteronomy 6 and verse 4, the Bible says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. James 2, 19, Thou believest that there is one God, thou do as well. The devil also believe, and they tremble. All Satan did that day he killed the lamb was to unveil, and I want to say to you, he was unveiling the lion. He was unveiling. He was taking the veil out of the lamb, but inside the lamb, there was the lion of the tribe of Judah. 1 Corinthians 2.10 What he did not know has been revealed to us by God's Spirit. Revelation 1, 17 and 18 says this, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that lived and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and the keys of death. If, does, if Satan doesn't even have the keys of his own kingdom, how can he lock you up? He has no key. And how come you have allowed him to lock you? The Bible says in the book of Psalms, the the, the snare of the fowler is broken. And if it is broken, what are you doing inside? Ata ndeke. Mtego ukitebuka. Ndeke anatebea na toroka. Wa unakaa pale na mnagani. Ati, ati bado naona hii mtego. Hii mtego, hii mtego bado umenishika. Na umetebuka. Oh my goodness. What are you doing? The devil ata funguwa za hii ufaume wake. Hana. Ame nyanganywa. Hata huu ugonjwa wame kufunika nao, hana nguvu wame nyanganywa. Huo umasini wame kufunika nao, hana mfunguo, hame nyanganywa. Oh my goodness, may the Lord have mercy on us. Yes, yes. Jesus has absolute power over physical death and spiritual death. When he said to the thief on the cross, today you shall be with me in paradise, he simply means today I have the key out of heart. Because he had the key. Hallelujah. Let me read two, three other scriptures and I finish. Psalm 68 and verse 18. Thou hast ascended on high. Thou hast led captivity as captive. Thou hast received gifts for men. Yes, for rebellious also that the Lord God might dwell among them. Ephesians 4, 8. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Ezekiel 37, verse 13. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, all my people, and brought you up out of your graves. <laughs> Hallelujah. If Satan was powerless in the realm of your death or in the realm of our death, we, which is our last enemy, as Corinthians 15, 1 Corinthians 15, 26 says, then he is also powerless in the realm of your life. His only power is deception. I want to speak to someone, stop wailing, start worshiping, so that your perspective can be right. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. My perspective can be right, so that I can see the Lord I can see the Lord not as a lamb slain, but as a lion of Judah. 
What are you doing? Shetani amekufinyilia na hana fukuo. I shake yourself up a little. I mean hana fukuo. Hana. Sio ni rokongo. Si rokongo ni ujuda. Iko sawa shetani hana fukuo. Najua wengine mtu huyu ni muujiza. Unapoona rokongo ameingia hapa ni muujiza. Ni miaka mingapi sasa ni rokongo? Me itakuwa miaka saba. This this me why why you? Daktari unachukulia alikuwa amempa nafasi ya kuishi. Hakuna lakini shetani hana uwezo. Uwezo una Mungu wetu. Usimkubalie. Why do you allow him? Ati oh, amenifinya sana sina uwezo. Ah ah. Let's see the lion of the tribe of Judah. Oh, our security. Ati kuna watu wanaitwa al-Shabab. No, no, let's see the lion of the tribe of Judah who has no power than our security. Our security can be bright, but our God he never sleeps nor slumbers. Are you sure you're the one who watched yourself last night? See, we learn that it is God who watched over us. This guy could have thrown bomb everywhere, but God is in control. And I refuse to allow the devil. I want to see the lion of the tribe of Judah. I don't want to see Uru and Ruto. I want to see the lion of the tribe of Judah. So the problem, the now, Sijui Tumwambie jirani yako anaweza kutabiri neno. Unaona nini? Sasa wacha kuwa mtu wa kiroho. Sasa sitaki kuwa very spiritual. Ati ninaona Muzaika. Ninaona Ruhu. Waja hiyo. Nataka useme ukweli wa mama unaonaje? Kwa sababu kuna wengine hapa unaona ukianguka mtihani wala mnarudi shule. Yaani umeanza kuona mama na kwa nini unaamini hii? Na si uone ambaye anaweza kukufungua akili. Usome mpaka wewe mwenyewe utishike na mwalimu wako ashangae na wazazi wako wapige nduru huyu ni wangu kwa sababu hiyo 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 ulikuwa ukimletea kila wakati ilikuwa ina depress alafu siku moja mwambie ah mama si unajua mtihani nilifanya na si unajua sasa nilipata e sasa si unajua nitafanya udaktari kwa sababu kuna wengine depressed there are some parents here, you have given up on your child, you are even thinking of buying a plot. Please, can I tell you something? Don't buy it. Keep that money. Your child is going places. When you know, my answer is to decide. When you move, to hear, to hear, to hear. At your home, to talk about it. Actually, don't speak. Close your mouth. Don't cast your child. Bless them. Speak good about them. Doctor, engineer, senator, governor. Ah, can you imagine? Oh my goodness. Can you know, Ati? Ati, you're the Baba ya senator. Oh, you're the Baba ya governor. Oh, you're the Baba ya. Hallelujah. Mumbiye jirani ya koshi da nikiri unawa. Si uone the lamb, si uone lamb, ona tu, ona the lamb. Na ukiona the lamb, utaogopa. Utaogopa. I have the father, the father of our Lord and the Savior, Jesus Christ. The problem of John was what he saw. But the elder who came from the throne worshipping the king of kings, what the elder saw was the lion of the tribe of Judah. Heavenly Father, maybe when we came to church, what we saw 
was defeat, discouragement, helplessness, hopelessness. We felt little. We felt unworthy. But Father, I pray that from this point on, we are going to put on the glasses of worshipers so that we can see the Lord exalted and lifted up and his train filling the temple. Yes, we want to see the glory of the Lord. We want to see the victory of the Lord. Open our eyes so that we can see the lion of the tribe of Judah. Maybe you are here financially, you feel hopeless. Maybe you, have, you are unwell. Maybe you, have, you, you feel there is no hope. Maybe you have looked for a job here and a job there and a job everywhere. And even coming to church today was what at the end of the Maybe you are there. Maybe your family, you are struggling in your family. Maybe you are wondering, is there a God? I want to pray for you, if you allow me. If you are struggling in any one way, would you stand on your two feet? I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Our Heavenly Father, it has nothing to do with my education. It has nothing to do with my family background. It has nothing to do with my financial status. It has nothing to do with the wife or family that I'm in. It, uh, it, it has nothing to do with the children that you have given me. It has nothing to do with where I am at the moment. Father, it has to do with my perspective. And I pray that you will open our eyes. Open my eyes. Open our eyes, Lord. Open our eyes from weeping to seeing the lion, from sorrow to seeing victory, from defeat to seeing winning. We want to be winners in the name of the Lord. Open our eyes. Open our eyes, Lord. Father, I also pray for those that are looking for jobs, that they will walk from here, believing that the door is open for them. It could be tomorrow. It could be this week. It could be this month. But it is open. It's just a matter of tracing it. Give us the wisdom and the knowledge to trace it and find it to the praise and to the glory of your dear name. Some are unwell, dear Father, from the crown of their head. I want to speak the healing balm of Gilead. That, dear Father, it will flow touching every part of their body. And releasing them, dear Father, to you who is able to do much more. Oh, dear Father, you are able to do abundantly. Oh, you are able to do exceedingly. Even what, dear Father, sometimes we can have an imagination about. You are able to do much more. I pray, dear Father, to release you, your resources to your people. Especially now when the children are going back to school, may you surprise some of us. Father, we are calling finances even from places that we never expected. We are calling finances from resources that we had long time ago. We are calling people to pay our debts that we had even forgotten. This is the day that they are going to do so to the praise and to the glory of your dear name. We want to pray that Heavenly Father, you're going to give us a fantastic week before us because our perspective our perspective, our perspective, our perspective have changed in Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord praise in the house.